Shut up and sit down. What's the story, Internet? Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. It is the final day before the end of 2020, before we lead into 2021. Uh, so before I review the uh, the Premier League matches from this week, we started the week with no La Liga matches, and then all of a sudden Barcelona draws with Ibar one all, Real Madrid draws with Elche one all, Atletico Madrid goes top of the table. <laughs> Only in twenty twenty could that happen. Like <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just wanted to talk about that just so that we could see that there's just been. Craziness going on in La Liga. But enough about the craziness in Spain. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Let's jump into the Premier League. So, Crystal Palace won, Leicester City won. Um, Crystal Palace had four shots with one on target, but they made it count. Leicester had 17 shots and only three on target, which means they didn't make any of them count. 67% um, possession and 33% possession to Leicester. Yeah, um, Crystal Palace, fair play for getting uh, for getting a draw. Uh, they were actually leading from the 58th minute, thanks to Wilfred Zaha. No surprise there. Um, and then Harvey Barnes just continues his incredible run at the moment. Scores in back-to-back -back matches. So, um, fair play to, uh, um, to Harvey Barnes. But I think that Crystal Palace will definitely be the happier of the two sides to come away with a point there. So... Um, before I continue on to the other matches, this crazy run of fixtures is all about the goalkeepers. It's all about the goalkeepers. The good and the really, really bad. <laughs> but we'll talk about that when we get to West Brom. Um, Chelsea won, Aston Villa won. Um, Chelsea went ahead thanks to Olivier Giroud. Just keeps on scoring like a fine French wine. <laughs> um, and then El Ghazi equalised for uh, Aston Villa. Um, a relatively even match, except for the possession. 64% to uh, Chelsea, 36% to Aston Villa. Um, shots 16-10 to 10 and 5-2 to 2 for on target. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Chelsea at the minute. Um, the loss to Arsenal... Now draw with Aston Villa. No disrespect to Aston Villa. I mean, Aston Villa completely embarrassed Liverpool. So I'm not saying that they're a bad side. But Chelsea have just gone a bit of a blip at the moment. So um, this drops them down to six. That means that Aston Villa actually overtake them level on points. But they have two matches in hand. So um, looking at the table, actually, if Aston Villa won both of those matches, um, they'd go into second. <laughs> so... Um, depending on Manchester United's result, because they have a game in hand as well. But um, So, on to the next match. Uh, yesterday's fixture, uh, Brighton nil, Arsenal 1. Um, Lacazette making an instantaneous impact off the bench in the 66th minute. Um, Brighton played incredibly well, actually. Um, their goalkeeper, what was his name, Sanchez, um, played very, very well. And even Leno for, uh, for Arsenal. Both made some incredible saves, um, but Lacazette just just made the difference. Brighton had a period in the first half. Uh, Arsenal dominated the first um, sort of 10, 15 minutes. And then Brighton, for the next sort of 20 minutes, just took the game by the scruff of the neck. And they, they should probably have, uh, have been 1-0 up. But like I mentioned, uh, Bern Leno doing his best. Um, so it brings Brighton even closer to the uh, to the bottom of the table, um, being stuck in 17th on 13 points. Um, Arsenal do go up a little bit. They've gone from 15th to 13th. So they're heading in the right direction. So the North London side will be very happy with that. Um, next match, I'm barely going to talk about. I, I watched the highlights. Kind of wish I hadn't. <laughs> nil nil draw between Southampton and West Ham. I mean, fair play to the goalkeepers, Fabianski and McCarthy. Um had brilliant performances. Um, both teams had eight shots, both teams had three on target, 63% possession to Southampton, 37% to West Ham. Um, and like I said, both goalkeepers made some incredible saves, but they cancelled each other out. Um, I don't know if it was the formations 
or just the way the teams were playing, but both teams cancelled each other out. So, um, I mean, it's a good point. It's a point for both teams. They're right next to each other in the table. Southampton in ninth, West Ham in 10th, uh, Southampton on 26, West Ham on 23 points. So, but I wouldn't recommend watching the highlights. <laughs> um, there were also, and it's not going to show me at the moment, but there were also two matches um, postponed, one today and one yesterday. Um, City, Fulham, Tottenham and Everton. I'm not sure what the fixtures were. Um, I'm pretty sure it was City against Fulham and then Tottenham against Everton, but I could have that wrong. I know it definitely wasn't City against Spurs, but... Um, but yeah, they were um, postponed, especially Fulham's match, because they had quite an outbreak of COVID. So those two matches were postponed, if you're wondering why I'm not talking about those. Um, on to the next one. And here's the bad for the goalkeepers. West Bromwich Albion nil, Leeds United 5. Um, Sam Johnston, and it's not even his fault. Um, it was Romain Sawyers with an awful back pass. So what goalkeepers have started doing, if you imagine, here's the box, it's the goal right there. What they've started doing is standing off to the side here so that they can um, stretch the play at an angle. So rather than staying static in the goal, they have sort of a head start if they need to rush out or whatever. So Sawyers goes to pass it back and instead of passing it to Sam Johnston, he passes it into the back of the net. Awful. Nothing Johnston could do. Um, I'm not saying that just because he's an ex-United prospect, but nothing he could do. Uh, second goal, nothing he could do. Alioski, just an incredible strike. Um, and then after that, the floodgates opened. And sometimes uh, you can be the best goalkeeper in the world, but if the floodgates open, there's not a lot you can do. <laughs> so, um, I mean, 76% possession to Leeds to 24% for West Brom. 14 shots and six on target to four and one. Um, but yeah, Sam Johnston, just not a good day at the office for him. And like I said, it's not even his fault. He did the best he could. I mean, 14 shots and only five of them went in. And one of them was known goal. So, but yeah, just not a good day to be a, a West Brom fan. <laughs> Big Sam and little Sammy won't be happy. <laughs> um, next match, Burnley won, Sheffield United nil. Um, poor Sheffield United, they just continue to be in that slump. Um, I mean, they played quite well. They had the lion's share of the possession, 63% to 37%. More shots with seven. Same shots on target, three. Um, to Burnley's five and three. But they just couldn't. They couldn't do it. And Ben Mee strikes again. So fair play to Burnley. Um, they held firm at Turf Moor and they were able to get the, uh, get the result. But yeah, Sheffield United, they're just having a tough old time at the minute. Um, now, into the last two matches, and in my opinion, the most interesting matches, no bias. A little bit bias. So, Manchester United won, Wolves nil. Now, the reason this is interesting is not because it's Manchester United. It's a little bit because it's Manchester United, but it was because it was nil-nil going into injury time. And both teams were relatively even. I don't know if the stats will show that. Yeah, only 59% to 41% possession. 11 shots with three on target to United. Nine shots to five on target for Wolves. De Gea was playing out of his skin. Rui Patricio made some incredible saves. The save from, I think it was Bruno Fernandes, where it was literally point blank. Um, and then Marcus Rashford. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. 93rd minute. Now, it did take a wicked deflection, but the ability to realise that his defender had cramp and just completely took advantage of that. And um, hard luck to the uh, to the Wolves' defence because they did really well. Um, especially, um, there was one lad, um, was it Kilman? Kilman and Hoover. Hoover was playing right mid because they were playing 3-4-1-2. But he was more of a right back and he was just incredible. Every time someone went near him, he was just getting them. And it was it was incredible to see because they were playing really, really, really good defensive football. Um, but Manchester United were able to do it. And this is the sort of thing that 
that you want to see as a United fan. Not only beating Wolves 1-0 or not being held 0-0 until the 93rd minute, but watching the team keep fighting and to get that late victory is just incredible. Um, Fergie time, Ole time, Ole's at the wheel, just ecstatic. And then the last match for these fixtures, and this is the most important show of goalkeepers this week, was um, Newcastle's goalkeeper, Carl Darlow, just had the match of his life against Liverpool. Um, I've watched the highlights and he was just everywhere. He was just, just incredible. So it finished nil-nil, which is great news for Manchester United. Um, and you can't say that Newcastle didn't deserve it. Liverpool played well. I mean, they had 74% of the possession to 26. They had 11 shots with four on target. But Newcastle had eight shots, only two on target. Um, and Alisson played well as well, speaking of goalkeepers. But Carl Darlow just made some incredible saves. One specifically from, uh, from a corner. I can't remember if it was direct from the corner or if the ball had come down and then went towards him. But he got straight down, slapped the ball away so that it didn't even have a chance of going over his line. And then the defenders cleared it. Um, DeAndre Yedlin, uh, the American defender, had an incredible match. Um, Callum Wilson had some opportunities to score. So Newcastle weren't out of this match by any means. So some very, very interesting matches. Like I said, this was the battle of the goalkeepers um, because there were some very, very um, good defensive displays, some very, very good goalkeeper displays. So um, if you're a goalkeeper, if you like saves and things like that, I would definitely recommend checking out the highlights of any of these matches. So um, that is the last review before the new year. Um, I will be back tomorrow for a preview because we do have some matches starting New Year's Day. Um, unfortunately, as a Manchester United fan, that does fill me a little bit with dread because um, for whatever reason, we just never win on New Year's Day. Um, I don't know if it's because it's Alex Ferguson's birthday or whatever, but <laughs> hopefully we can break that curse. We'll see. Um, so, but yes, I will be back tomorrow with a preview video going over the weekend's fixtures. And um, yeah, until then, I hope you're all keeping safe, staying out of trouble. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. So, Rafa now. <laughs>